Okay, and we're going to get busy. We're not going to take up a lot of time. It's, there's still a bad echo, uh, PJ. Uh, Hummy, uh, turn. Make sure everything is off but me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and uh, even turn the uh, monitors down. So, Amen. And if I say, would I say Ephesians? Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Now, we started Wednesday night, and we delved into some things on Wednesday night, and we talked about some things on Wednesday night, and um, we're going to springboard from that this morning, but then I want you to just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you, get, you got your seatbelt on? Because I believe we're getting ready to go into some turbulent weather. In other words, I, I feel a strong air wind coming on, and uh, there may be a little rocking and a little reeling. Whole lot of whole lot of shaking gonna be going on. Whole, whole lot of shaking gonna be going on, because I realize that in order for us to get to where God wants us to be, we cannot move into what God will have us into. Other words, where we were last year. Every year is going to bring us into greater and deeper things of God, going to cause us to have a greater responsibility to the things of God. And so, as Sister Sharon put it so beautifully this morning, is that you got to stay focused. You, you have to stay focused. And sometimes, you know, you don't even know that you lost your focus until somebody, you know, alerts you. You know what? That ain't the path that you say you was going on. Uh, you listen to me. It can be so subtle. It can be so cunning. I mean, just a little off course. Just for a little while, you're not going to end up where you want to end up at. Just a, a, a slight variation to where you was going to get you completely off course. Are we listening? Are y'all listening to me this morning? And so Wednesday night, we start talking about precepts, laws, statutes, and all those different things. And we start talking about, I think we talked about the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. Did we not? And so this morning, what I'm going to talk about, we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to start with verse 19. And then we're going to read down to verse 22. And we're going to talk about one thing, and that one thing we're going to talk about probably is going to be the catalyst of where you, the reason why you are where you are. And it's, it has been your problem in the past, and if you ain't careful, it'll be your problem, you know, present, and it'll be your problem in the future unless you do something about it. Now, let me say this. When I come in here on Sunday morning, it is a high-level, and Wednesday night is a high-level briefing. It, it is not religious. It is not something that just want to make you feel good, but it's something that's going to challenge you at your very core. If God's going to take us someplace, then that means we have to be prepared to go where God is taking us. And so that means you have to be tough-skinned in some areas. I'm going to say some things this morning. It might seem like I'm picking on one or two or three or four. I don't really know. But I'm not picking on anyone. But I do understand something that we need truth. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20, I think it's 4 and 20. It might be 5 and 20. Uh, I think, let me, let me tell you exactly. No, Ephesians 4 and 15. It says, speak the truth in love whereby they may grow up into him or into him in all things. So you can't grow up unless I give you truth. And let me just go ahead and tell you sometime the truth hurts. The truth, will crush, the truth will crush your emotions. The truth will crush your feelings. So just go ahead and go ahead and go ahead and crush your own feelings. Go ahead and crush your own emotions so I won't have to. Are uh, you listening to me? Because I'm not moved by your emotion. I, I'm not moved, other word, by your feeling. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to give you truth so you can be effective. Are uh, y'all listening to me? And since sometimes you won't tell yourself the truth, God has to use me to tell you the truth and use me to tell myself the truth. I'm not lying to myself. I know the errors in my life that I need God. I know the errors in my life where I'm rebellious. I know the errors. See, see, I don't need you to tell me. I know that. So I'm not deceiving myself. But some of you make excuses for where you are, and therefore God hits you on Sunday and hits you on Wednesday. So, in other words, you got no way to run because he makes you come face to face with truth. Are y'all with me? Because you said you wanted truth. God says, okay, you say you want it, I'm going to give it to you. Now, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, and uh, I'm not going to, I'm just going to start here, but then I'm going to read several scriptures. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, vagrance, 
emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murdering, drunkering, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He did not say those that do such things will not go to heaven. He said you will not inherit the, what, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. You will not inherit God's way of doing things. Now, that's not good for you to practice those things. Those things are not something you want to wear as a badge. But he says if you're going to do those things, then you are yielding to a lower nature. Are you listening to me? He said when you are operating, manifesting in these things, you operate not in your God-given nature, but your lower nature. Are you listening? And he says, now you are not operating on kingdom principles. You're operating on a fleshly principle. Now let's keep reading on. Next verse. Verse 20, what? Verse 22. Here's the contrast. He say, now the works of the flesh of what I just read. Now he says the fruits of the spirit. Now this is what you got when you got born again. That all the stuff I read prior was in you before you got born again. And you hadn't forgotten how to do any of those things. But you have to choose to allow the fruits of the Spirit to operate in your life. Every one of us at any given time can revert revert back to our lower nature and begin to do the same things that we did prior to being born again. You still know how to curse. You still know how to drink. You still know how to have sex. You still know how to do all the things that you knew how to do before you got born again. But the fact that now that you are born again, you have the nature of God on the inside of you. And these things that I'm about to read is supposed to be operating and growing. Everybody say operating and growing. growing. They are in there, but you have to cause these things to grow. They don't grow automatically. Are you listening to me? They don't grow automatically. So that means you must purposely seek out to develop these things that I'm about to read. And we're going to talk about one of them this morning. And that's the only one we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this one this morning. We may not talk about the rest of them next week. But there's one thing in here that is controlling us and controlling where we're going in God. And if we don't get this right, none of the other ones going to work. Now, somebody would say this. Somebody would say, well, it's got to be love. Now, love is very important. And love does control most of those rest of them. But love not necessarily will control all of them. Come on now. You, I, I'll get to it. Love is very important. Now, love would be the basis of all of them. Love would be the foundation of all of them. If you really love God the way you say you love God, then love will be the essence that causes all the rest of them to work. But you know, we say we love God all the time, don't we? We say God's number one all the time, don't we? We say we don't know what we'd do without God if God were in our life. Don't we say those kind of things? Don't we make swelling words and spelling declarations of what God means to us and what God is to us? But when we actually examine it, there ain't a whole lot of fruit to back up what we say that God is to us. Come on, look at me and talk to me. So he says now the, 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 the works of the flesh, and he went all through that whole list. Then now he said, but the fruit of the spirit is what? Verse 22, but the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith or faithfulness, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. When you are walking in these is how many is it in there? Is it nine? When you are walking in these nine fruits of the spirit and you are developing these nine fruits of the spirit then I'm telling you, the devil, the devil is no match for you. I I need to say that slowly. Y'all might need want to take her next door. Uh, I said when you are operating and developing these nine fruits of the spirit, the devil, listen, is no match for you. He can't control you. He can't manipulate you. He can't just tell you what to do because when these uh, nine fruits of the Spirit are operating in your life, that makes you the head and not the tail. That makes you in control rather than being out of control. Are y'all listening to me? 
Now, gifts of the Spirit is one thing. The only thing gifts has to be done is received. But the gifts operate as the Spirit will. How I many of you know the, the gifts of the Spirit? You know, tongues, interpretation of the tongues, you know, prophecy, all these other words in 1 Corinthians chapter what, 14, 12 and 14. And so the gifts of the Spirit is to be received by the Spirit, but the gifts only work as the Spirit wills. Now, the fruits of the Spirit was given to us at birth, at our new born again experience. You can be born again and have not developed any of these fruits. You can be born again and listen, still in infant stage and been saved for 20 years. These fruits of the Spirit is what actually impress God, not the gifts of the Spirit. Because the gifts of the Spirit is given as the Spirit desire and to be used as the Spirit dictates. But the fruits of the Spirit is supposed to be in operation in our lives every day of the week. These fruits of the Spirit is what keep us in control. These fruits of the Spirit is what cause maturity and cause growth to take place in our Christian life and our Christian walk. All right? Now, the one I want to talk about, the one I want to talk about this morning, it ain't love. The one I want to talk about this morning, it ain't, it's not the next one. It's not joy. The one I want to talk about is not peace. It's not long-suffering. It's not gentleness. It's not goodness. Nor is it faithfulness. And all of these are great. And we need to talk about all of these at some point in time. We just don't have time this morning to talk about all of them. What, what, what I want to talk about this morning, it ain't meekness. What I want to talk about this morning is temperance. What I want to talk about this morning is temperance. The other day, I think it was Thursday, I was reading in a book, and the book was Becoming a Millionaire God's Way. Becoming a Millionaire God's Way. And uh, he got to a point in the book, and he started talking about Self-control. The word temperate means self-control. You need to write that down. Self-control. Touch your neighbor and say, are you in control or are you out of control? <laughs> see, see we, we're going we're to talk about that this morning. We're going to talk about self-control. See, the problem with the church is we want to control others, but we don't want to control ourselves. Are, are y'all listening to me? Uh, we got uh, all kind of opinions about other people, but we don't have an opinion about us. We want to talk dog about everybody else and make excuses for us. Are, are we talking this morning? And see, the only person you're supposed to be controlling is yourself. Anybody else you're trying to control is manipulation. It is a spirit of witchcraft. And God never told you to control another. He told you to control yourself. You're in a mess because you ain't controlling yourself. You're not, you had not been in control for a long time. That's the reason why you've had a, a years and years and years of mess because you refuse to control yourself. Are y'all listening to me? See, you're too busy thinking about everybody else and ain't thinking about yourself. You're too busy dipping in other people's business and ain't taking care of your own business. Are, are y'all listening to me? You got an opinion about everybody, but you don't have a healthy opinion about you. You make excuses for you while you criticize other people. Are y'all listening to me? You have a full-time job in making sure yourself is under control. Because the rest of those eight fruits of the Spirit will not work if you are out of control. Are we communicating? So that word temperance means self-control. Definition for it means the ability to control one's behavior and not act emotionally. The ability, what did I say? The ability to do what? The ability to control one's behavior and not act emotionally. Now we communicate. Self-control is the ability to control one or uh, what? I said one's behavior and not act emotionally. Let me ask you this question. How many of you got in mess because you acted emotionally? Every hand ought to go up. How many of you disregarded the facts, but then you went with your feelings? Uh, I mean, all up in your face here, all up in your grill. Man, the word fool comes in your mind all the time, but you disregarded that because of a feeling you had. And you make excuses for the people that you got feelings for because you want what you want. 
No, no, you, you want what you want, so you'll make excuses for other people's behavior, how they treat you, and everything else is because you are so wrapped up emotionally, so wrapped up in your feelings, you totally disregard the fact, and then you are totally oblivious to what they're doing. Ty, he didn't mean what he said. Yes, he did mean what he said, fool. You're out of control. You, you don't love yourself. That's the reason why you settle and you make excuses for other people. Are you listening? That's the reason why you make excuses for being fat. That's the reason why you make excuses for being broke. That's the reason why you make excuses for not having friends. Because you don't want to do what it takes necessary to change you. Are y'all listening to me? And you are hellfire bent on having it your way. And God is not going to agree with it because it's not the word of God. I don't mean to be so passionate this morning, but we've got to get real with this thing. The biggest mistake you made is because you either didn't know the facts or you disregarded the fact because you got emotionally involved too quick. You fell in love too quick. You got in debt too quick. And you set your sights on something and the Holy Ghost himself couldn't get you to turn around. Because you're out of control and you keep telling yourself, I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have it. And then when you get it, you say, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I thought I wanted it. (laughs) Are y'all listening to me? Most people, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a house, whether it's a car, whether it's everything, they have not properly considered all the facts. They just stepped out there on their emotions and because their emotions say, I want it, you know what you say? And, and, and I'm not picking on anybody. You know what you say? I'll make a way. That ain't God's way. God never told you to make a way. He said, I am the way. See, that's what's wrong. We've been trying to make a way. That, that, that's the reason why right now the church is half empty because you know why? Their, their jobs are taking all their time away from God because God said, you won't do it my way. You won't do it my way. You won't do it my way. So I have to allow you to suffer it your way. See, we're in the kingdom. And in the kingdom, it ain't our way. It ain't Burger King. We can't have it our way. We've got to have it God's way. Ask yourself, am I in control? Can I tell myself no to the things I want? People that can't tell themselves no to something physical, they're going to have sex. Oh, you listen to him. The person that can't tell themselves no to any habit going to give it to and justify it. Are, are y'all listening to me? The, the, the person, no matter how things look, other words, you'll make excuses for it and you'll justify it. You know what? You no, know, you, you're fat because you know why? You won't do nothing about it. You're broke because you won't do nothing about it. You're friendless because you won't do nothing about it. And you keep making excuses for it because you don't want to discipline yourself to change. Self-control. Tempered. If you know anything about iron, you know anything about steel, my God, when they temper steel, my God, it is an awesome process they go through. They have to heat that thing up. See, God has to heat this thing. That's what he's doing this morning. He's heating you up. And then he's going to dip you in water because that water solidifies it. The washing of the word, by the, the word by the water of God's word. See, what God do? He'll heat you up. He'll get you whole hot that you can't deny other word that it is what it is. And then he give you the word to do something about it. It's, uh, the water solidifies that hot steel. But you got to heat that stuff up. It will always be weak unless it's tempered. Uh, y'all listen to me. You will always be weak unless you let the Holy Ghost temper you. Oh, y'all listen to me. Got to have that man. Got to have that car. Got to have those clothes. Got to have that shoes and hat. No matter, you're already in debt, but you got to have that. You can't walk in the store, other words, and look at something and walk away because you're not tempered. You're emotionally ruled. Oh, you listen to me, and you keep making excuses for it. And quit sounding like God going to get you out of debt while you're trying to get yourself in more debt. That ain't God's way. That's your way. You go look at that stuff, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. And the pride of life. The reason why you won't take it back is because you're too prideful. Hello? That's the reason why you won't take it back. You don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be saying because you stepped too soon. You ran too quick. That's the reason why you don't have a plan. If you got a plan, your plan will say, hey, wait a minute. Come here. Come here. We didn't say we was going to do that. We didn't say we, 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 had made, we made no provision for this. That's the lust of your flesh that just came up, and you got to have it now. And that's what got you to mess all these years. It's because you couldn't tell yourself, wait. 
You couldn't tell yourself, wait to get married before you start having all them kids. That's the reason why you're on the poverty line right now. You can tell Jimmy Lee or, or, or Jimmy Jones or the word, wait. And y'all, some of y'all, your girls, y'all scare me because you're giving your boyfriend everything now. He ain't gonna ever marry you. I'm sorry, he ain't gonna ever marry you. Why? Why buy the cow when you get the milk free? Are y'all listening to me? My God, you act more like his wife than, than we that are married. And my God, we that are married jealous over y'all because we don't get that kind of treatment even though we pay it for it. That's stupid. That's because you're not in control of yourself. And you're afraid if you stop, you'll lose them. Well, if you stop and you lose them, you never had them anyway. You shouldn't have never started in the begin with. Hallelujah. Come on now. And since I'm already on this subject, and since I'm already making you mad, listen to this. That baby, who, if he ain't your daddy, he ain't your daddy yet. Y'all don't have a, if you don't have no ring, quick let him call him daddy. Because you know why? You're, te- you're saying something is a fact. It ain't no fact. He may leave you tomorrow. Leave you all broken and all bloody. But your heart all wrapped up in them so much so that you're acting like they're your husband. You can't act them like they're your husband. They haven't even asked you to marry them. And even if they have, they, mar- they don't have a plan in place, in other words, to make you assured that this is going to happen that way. Because if they're a man of their word, what makes you think they're going to keep their word to you? Oh, y'all listen to me. But you just fall in love so quick and you just, just let your heart go and all of a sudden, I'm telling you, they may leave you wounded, bloody, and a mess. You cooking and you cleaning and everything. For what? For what? For a maybe. maybe for a maybe one day somehow. Man, that is fluky. That is, that ain't, there ain't no balance in that. I'm not going to rest my hat on maybe one day when everything work out all right and when I quit being afraid of the word of commitment, but you cooking and you cleaning, in other words, and you doing all this kind of stuff for what? That time you ought to be spending on yourself. That time you ought to be spending on your child because, listen, you're treating your boyfriend like a child. You're not his mama. Quit acting like that. You didn't have him. You didn't birth him. You're not responsible for them. And some of you messing me up because I'm trying to get them to the manhood, but you keep treating them like a baby. Even call them baby. It ain't no baby. I'm trying to, I'm trying to break that baby stuff off of them. I'm trying to give them some backbone. I'm trying to tell you, that don't take responsibility for yourself, but you got somebody else over here treating you like you're a little baby. You ain't no baby. You're 25, 26, 27 years old. You're not a baby. You're a man. I act like a man. Quit whipping and whining and grow up. And y'all women need to quit treating them like babies because you're messing my job up. And get your own heart right. That's the reason why you wouldn't have failed so quick. (sighs) Come on, he ain't got his business together. You ain't got yours together. But then you're in love. That's crazy. We're not going to talk about that. But then let me me go ahead and move on. We're talking about about self-control this morning. Because you've got to have a behavior. In other words, you've got to have an ability to control your behavior and not to act emotionally. That's where most people's problem has come from because they acted out their emotion and they acted out their feeling. And Satan knows because you're an emotional person, he'll flash something across your face and the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life have captured you. And you have fallen yourself prey to those things. You've gotten yourself in a world of debt. You've gotten yourself in relationships that you can't handle for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Look at them biceps. Look at them triceps. You better quit looking, period, because that's going to mess you up. Because you can look at all that stuff and you still can't touch. At least you ain't supposed to. And you're looking at all that butt and looking at all them breasts and all this stuff and you still can't touch. You ain't that strong to hang out at somebody's house acting like other words, you all that. You know you ain't all that. Oh, you listen to me. You know you done slipped more than one or two times and you keep putting yourself in these kind of positions because you tell yourself you're strong. No, no, no. You can confess, let the weak say I'm strong, but then the weak need to make sure that I stay away from certain situations because I really ain't strong. That's my confession, but that's not my reality yet. Are y'all listening to me? And put me in the wrong environment and I'll mess up. That's the reason why some of you better stay out of them stores because you ain't got enough self-control to say no to yourself because this ain't in my plan. I ain't figured this out. My question is this. How much did you save last month? 
How much, how much is in your savings? How much did you save last month? How, how much did you save last month? Well, you can't go and spend five months in a head when you ain't saved nothing last month. No, 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 no. We're supposed to have a plan. When you're in control, out of every check ought to be something ought to be putting back. But you're out of control. You got to have everything and you got to have it now. You're out of control. Hello. Now, you can use your faith for anything you want but controlling yourself. Are y'all looking at me? This, why are y'all looking at me in this? Are y'all listening to me? And see, somebody got to love you enough to tell you the truth because what you are living in is you're living in the now. You are not making any preparation for your future. You're living in the now. You want everything right now. What's, what about tomorrow? What about next week? You're just enjoying the moment. And nothing wrong with enjoying the moment if it is laid on a firm foundation. You got to live today. I'm not talking about store away everything in the bank for another day and you're not living today. You got to live today, but you cannot consume everything on this particular day because there's another day going to come. Let me ask you a question. If you had to have if you had to have a thousand dollars tomorrow, could you go get it without borrowing it? Could you go to the bank and get your own money out? Unless going to going somebody else borrowing. I'm talking about a thousand dollars. You forty years old, you fifty years old, you I mean whatever it is, and you have not saved a thousand dollars in fifty something years, you out of control. You got a lot of stuff, but then you don't have any cash. Are y'all listening to me? And then you spending tomorrow you spending tomorrow's money today. You ain't going to ever break out of that cycle until you still stand yourself. No, we've got to get disciplined in this area. It don't happen. It never happened to me that way. It ain't going to happen to you that way. I had to get to a point that things don't bother me. I can go to Walmart and walk through the whole store and walk out and not buy a thing. Are you listening to me? Why? Because you know what? Life does not consist of the abundance of things you gather. You're out of control in that area. You're out of control in habit area. And you're born again, tongue talking. You need to shut up some of them tongues and get yourself under control. Can't nobody beat you hooping and hollering. Can't nobody beat you speaking in tongue. But your life out of control. You're not tempered. You can't go through anything. And let me tell you something. If you can't tell yourself no, then you're going to have a lot of problems telling other people no. Because you know why? You want people to like you. And when you start telling people no, sometimes you know they ain't going to like you when you tell them no. Your, your flesh ain't going to like you when you tell it no. Are y'all listening to me? And pride a lot of times will keep you from doing the right thing because you don't want to look bad. Are y'all listening to me? I would take it back, but, you know, you listen to me. I would take it back, but you know what? I really can't, can't, I can't afford this yacht because I haven't disciplined myself, but then I can't, other words, what, what they going to think about me? It ain't no matter what they think about you. It's what God knows about you. And it's what you know about yourself. What are, what are your list of priorities that you have? How that's going to affect you? See, this thing is going more than anything else. What are you doing about your health? Now, confessing the word is right, but that ain't all of it. That's the beginning of it. You can't confess the word and treat your body any kind of way and expect to have maximum health. I told you Wednesday night, we don't, we don't trust, we don't respect health. We respect healing. We are run in every healing line trying to get healed, but we will not read and study and make life changes because we don't respect health. We respect money, but we don't respect wealth. That cause you work for money every day, but you will not investigate. You will not, other words, invest in things that will change your mind and the way you think about wealth. Are y'all listening to me? I don't need you robbing tomorrow for the day and all to say, well, God's going to see me through. That is a misnomer. That is something that you conjured up in your mind. There's no way in the world that I'm going to talk about healing and I'm doing stuff to affect my body. That's, that's foolishness. Ain't no way in the world I'm talking about coming out of debt and getting in debt. Come on now. How can I say I'm getting out, but then I'm getting deeper in all the time? That's foolish. And you know why you're doing that? Because of emotions. Because of feelings. Hey, listen, if you can live without it that long, other words, you can live while, a little while longer until you get some stuff in, in, in check. You get some stuff. That's the reason why some people paycheck don't last no more than an hour after they get it. Why? Because you bought stuff right now trying to satisfy a urging and a feeling and a loan, and that thing been two, three years ago. 
and you're still indebted to it. You went and you looked at something and it was pretty. It was nice. And you say, wouldn't I look good in this? Yeah, but you would look worse on the street. <laughs> you listen to me. So you ride around in something nice, but you can't even eat good because things are out of order. Are y'all listening to me? We want what other people think about us. We want to parade around and we want to look prosperous instead of being prosperous. I don't want to look prosperous. I want to be prosperous. A lot of people are faking stuff out like they got this going on. They ain't got that going on. That's a facade. That is something that you want people to believe that you got it going on. God ain't into this stuff or trying to fluff and buff stuff to make other people think well of you. God wants to make sure do you have your life in order. Do you have a plan for your health this year? Do you have a plan for your money this year? Do you have a plan for your relationship this year? See, all this stuff, other words, see, because you have nothing to do with it once God gives it to you unless you already have a plan. And it will, it will protect you from your emotions and your feelings if you got a plan. Because you say, that ain't in the plan. Are you listening? Let me give you one, another definition for this word, temperate. Temperance is self-control. It's the ability to control one's behavior and not act emotional. The word temperate, matter of fact, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Is this okay? See, one of the things how you're going to get ahead in life is you got to be willing to, to say, I made a mistake. You got to be willing to say, I didn't think it through. You, you got to be able to say, you know what? I, I did that on the impulse. I did that on the impulse. I don't know what I was thinking. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what I was thinking right there. I mean, I was temporarily insane. Oh, you listen, I was temporarily insane. And, and, and when you realize that you did something foolishly, you got to go back. You got to first repent and say, God, I didn't think this thing through. I, I didn't think this thing through. Now, I, I've got to go back and I got to repent and I got to go have egg on my face. But the thing of it is, it, it, uh, it ought to prepare you the next time you go to do something emotionally. You say, wait a minute. Y'all remember last time? I, I don't like being made a fool out of. I don't like having egg on my face. But then I much rather go back, in other words, and get this thing straight before I plunge myself into a mess for the next two or three years. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? I have to do the same thing. I have to do the same thing at the house. I have to do the same thing with this church. I can't just go plunge this church in all kind of debt and then ask y'all, okay, all right, I'll just put all of us in debt. Now y'all pay for it. You wouldn't like that. You say, I had no say so in that. Why did we do all that at this time? And in every service, he begging for more money because I, if I'm an em, em, emotional, I mean, person and a pastor that just operate on my feelings and get y'all in a mess financially. You wouldn't like that. Now, would you? We didn't have to have all that right then. Pastor, we, we could have waited. No, because listen, if I am operating in my flesh and my emotion because I want everybody to think well of us and not thinking about we don't know what tomorrow we're going to bring. You're basing that on where you are right now. And if right now where you are is weak at, anything out of the ordinary happening going to put you in a worse state. And then you're going to start trying to confess God. God, now you know I need this. God, you know I need God said, well, you didn't ask me all about that before you just did what you did. Now you want to come consult me now that you're in a mess. You want me to just deliver you. God don't deliver you out of every mess quickly. Because he wants you to learn the lesson. No right now does not mean no forever. No right now doesn't mean that I am withholding from you. No right now just simply mean that I don't have some stuff in order. We serve the most purposeful, most orderly person that they ever have been, but we live the most disordered life of anyone on this planet. Are y'all listening to me? Because we are too self-conscious thinking about ourselves. And I told you before, God, we are God's responsibility. But I know, like you know, that God does not work fast enough for us. Don't he? You, you know God don't work fast enough for you. That's the reason why you say, well, I'll do it myself. Same way you ask your kid to do something and they ain't doing it fast enough, you say, get out of the way. I'll do it myself. Yeah, you may do it yourself, but you just rob them an opportunity of learning. Hello. Some people want stuff now. 
Are y'all listening to me? I'm going to say this because the devil told me not to say it. I'm going to say it anyway. That's the reason why right now Shannon's in a mess because she can't wait on stuff. And that's the reason why the blessing of God will be with Whitney because she learned how to be obedient and wait. She'd have, she'd have got her a car. She'd have got some other stuff too. But you can't wait. When you can't wait, you'll mess it up because you think you can do better for yourself. And the moment you think you can do better for yourself, God will let you do it. And a parent will let you do it. But you're about to make a mess because you can't wait. Not going to respect a person. Not going to buy a wedding car. Not buy her one if she's obedient. But if she ain't obedient, she can't get it. And then you say, I'll get it myself. And yeah, you'll get a lot of hell with it too. Are we communicate? I say, are we communicate? You will feed all your children. You will do what you can for all your children. But what separates them is obedience and disobedience. And when we don't give it to you fast enough, you'll say, move out of the way. I'll get it myself. Yeah, you may get it yourself, but you don't realize all the strains that are attached to your getting it yourself because you don't know what's all involved. Are y'all with me? And so God wants us to be temperate in all things. Sister Mentor taught you last week, I need to know what Paul knows. Paul said, I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. We don't know how to be a base. We want everything when we want it. We don't know how to have to wait on anything because we want everything when we want it. And that's the reason why some of you are in the mess you're in now because you ain't willing to wait on nothing. You big and bad, and if you big and bad, you're going to do it for yourself, and you don't give God the opportunity to work on your behalf because you think he moves too slow. Are y'all with me? And so we run and try to make things happen for ourselves, get ourselves in a mess. And the same God that we don't consider, we got to go back to him after we done made the mess and ask him to help us get out of this mess we done made for ourselves. That's the reason why a lot of places I don't simply go because I don't need that temptation. What I mean by that, I don't need to because I'm the kind of person, I'm a kind of like a go-getter kind of person, and that's the reason why I stay away from some stores. That's the reason why I stay away from some stuff because I don't need that temptation because I see it, I'll make a way. <laughs> Y'all listening to me. And some things I don't need to be making no way for. Are you listening? And taking what God would want me to do to invest in other things. Now I got to go because I'm a man of my word. I've got to, I've obligated myself to something else that's of less value. That is not an asset anyway, but is a liability. Now I'm not talking about things that are asset because if things is an asset and God is leaving you to do that, then listen, that is something that you, that's an investment you making. That ain't something that's going to lose value. That ain't something that you go to other words two months from now going to be less value than what it is. Cars are, 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 are not assets. They're liabilities. Clothes are not assets. They're a liability. Are y'all listening to me? home, real estate, land, those kind of stuff like that, given the particulars are assets most of the time. It's an investment most of the time because most of the time you can sell it and get your money and some out of it. You can't sell clothes and get no asset out of it, get no value out of it. You can't sell a car most of the time unless you're a mechanic that you buy something and you can fix it up yourself and resell it. But if you're not a mechanic, most of the time cars are not an asset. They are a liability. You lose money the time the minute you buy it. Clothes, furniture, and everything else. Jewelry sometimes is a liability as well. It don't have to be an asset. It can be an asset, but it don't necessarily mean it's an asset. An asset is something that goes up in value, not diminish in value. Now, y'all listening to me. And we spend most of our monies on liabilities. And then wondering why we don't have anything, because we're not investing in stuff that's going to cause our income to come up, but actually cause our income to decrease. Now, we don't wait on God to bless us or show us what to do because we're so impatient. We've got to have it now. You got 1 Corinthians chapter 9? The person that always say, can't control. We're talking about self-control. And see, one thing about self-control is this. It's not, even, it's not only talking about money. I'm not only talking about relationship, but I'm telling you something else. Self-control, you have to be able to control your anger. The graveyards and the prisons are full of people that did not control their anger. Somebody made them mad and they lost control. I promise you, they, they had lost control before the person made them angry. That was just manifested when they said something. Let me tell you, there is nobody that can make you madder than the people that are closely around you. 
Your enemies, if you ain't careful, be those in your own household. And if you don't watch yourself, they'll make you lose your control. You have to make a decision that no matter what somebody says, and I have to make that decision myself, no matter what somebody says, I'm not going to lose control. Because when I lose control, I'm not myself. Are y'all listening? How many know when you lose control, you're not yourself? You kind of like an alcoholic once they get on alcohol. Other words, you're intoxicated. Anger causes you to be intoxicated. Cause your blood pressure to go up. You don't think straightly when you're the words you're angry. That's the reason why you got to control it. If you don't control your anger, you start breaking stuff that you ain't paid for yet. That's stupid. You start trying to run over people with cars that you still own. That's stupid. That's supernatural stupid. And you can justify it and say, that's just the way I am. Well, you need to change. That ain't just the way you are. You need to change. That's you yielding to a lower nature. That's you yielding to your flesh. Quit making excuses, other words, and change. Stop making excuses and change. Because when you get angry, it can blow two or three days, not just one day. It can blow two or three days. You're still angry three days later. And you don't just get angry, other words, and leave it at that. When you get angry, then you want to retaliate. Are y'all listening to me? That's the reason why you got to get yourself. Say, self, I got to get you back in, under control. Because you ain't acting like God. You're acting like the devil. Now, see, you'll tell other people that, but you won't tell yourself that. You'll tell other people, you're acting like the devil. But when the last time you told yourself, you were acting like a fool. You're acting like the devil, boy. I'm talking about looking in the mirror at yourself. You say not the things that be of God. You're not acting like God acts. And just because somebody said something is no a reason for you to just to lose your cool and start acting stupid. Hello? Because people are going to always sometimes say things that you don't want them to say. You can't control what another person says, but you can control the way you respond to it. And if you're in self-control, it does not have to penetrate you. You ought to have the shield of faith up that some things just hit, hit your shield and fall right off and you don't even respond to it. Or if you do respond to it, you only respond to it with a look. And keep looking and keep walking. Let your look do your talking. Because the truth of the matter is, it ain't a seed until it come out your mouth. Are y'all listening to me? Sometimes you just need to look and keep walking. You know what I'm saying? Don't you hear me? No. Just keep walking. Because you know what? Now, if, if I got the shield up, what I'm doing is I'm protecting myself. Because if I let what you say penetrate me, I'm going to start thinking things, going to start saying things that I'm going to have to repent of later. And I need to make sure I'm under control because you know what's going to happen? The person that made you mad most of the time won't get the brunt of your aggression except the next person you meet. They just made you mad, but somebody else, see, they, they just sowed a seed and then that seed harvesting over on somebody else and you be like, well, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, what, what's up? I mean, I, I, ain't, I ain't had nothing to do with it. Because you got to find somewhere to release it. You got to find somewhere to vent it. But see, the only reason why you have to find somewhere to vent it is because you let it penetrate you. You got First Corinthians chapter 9. See, that thing called temperate, that thing called temperate is something. When you are temperate, you can go through anything. Hear what I said? You can go through anything. I didn't say it would be pleasant. I said you can go through it. How do these bridges, how do these bridges hold up so much weight that big tractors and trailers, other words, I mean by the thousands, can go on because they have been tempered, other words, to carry that kind of weight for years and years and years and years. And you know the only thing for the most part that can weaken those things is intense heat. The same thing that got the tempered in the first place. If a track in a trailer all of a sudden blows up and the fire from that heat will, will begin to weaken the structure under that bridge. The same thing that caused it to be strong in the first place, heat and water solidified it. But then more heat will weaken it. That's the reason why in order to bend steel or whatever, you got to heat it up. See, that's the reason why you got to be careful when you get heated up. Because you are not your strongest. You're not your strongest when you're heated you're your strongest after being heated and the washing of the water of the word because again, to solidify that, you let the word take care of your heat problem. 
Because when you get hot, you're dangerous. Hello. That's the reason why the Bible says be slow to get angry. Be swift to hear. Be what? Slow to speak and slow to get angry. Because when you get angry, you do not do the righteousness of God. Self-control. I'm under control. I ain't got to have that. I ain't got to have this. I ain't got to have that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh, praise, praise God. That's nice. Oh, okay, boom, fine. Praise God, that's nice. Boom. That's well, praise God, that's good. Boom. You know what? Sister Gwen probably, I don't really know. You know, she might have the credit or whatever. She, she might can go next, tomorrow up there to the Lexus place and get that Lexus. She might could. I don't know. Might not be the wisest thing she ever done, but the thing of it is, she might can do it. But see, the thing of it is, is she better have be tempered. She better be able to say, wait, because that one, that one decision can throw everything off. It ain't major decision sometimes. It's one little decision that you can make can throw everything that was right, make it wrong. So you have to be careful, not because you can do, but is this the right time? And let me show you something. It ain't the right time unless you have had a history of doing the right thing and you are on the right track. Y'all listening to me. If you ain't been saving nothing, you can't keep spending. Are y'all listening to me? And if you could not go in the bank and take it out at one time and say, her, and have no regrets about it, see, then you ain't ready for it. Because to go in your bank and take out $1,000 or $2,000 or $3,000 or $5,000 and go give it to somebody at one time, you know what, and you walk away with no regrets, then you probably, in other words, in a right position to have it. Most people won't do that because you know why? That ain't that important to them. And, and it, it took them too long to save it up, to go with one little swoop, to go take it and give it to somebody. What you do is go get in debt for it because you're going to piecemeal it for two, three years, but you wouldn't go take your cash out and go do right what you were about to do with it because it ain't that important to you. Why? Because you remember how long it took you to save all that money. And the only person, really, most of the time, that I'll go into the bank and do something like that for, and most of the time, sometimes the Holy Ghost has to tell me more than once or twice to do it, it's by his leading. The Holy Ghost got to prompt me to do something like that. Because I realized I didn't get that in two months. I didn't get that in three months. That was consistency. That's the reason why when you're consistent in something over a long period of time, you know what? You don't have no problem putting that cake down. If every time you see the cake, you see 10 more miles you got to walk or 10 more miles you got to run. You say, hey, 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 hey it ain't worth it. Hey. But, si- but since you ain't walking at all, at, since you ain't walking at all just to the car and in the house, you ain't walking no way, cake don't have no effect on you. See, see, because you, you got to say, you got to look at it from this standpoint right here. Consequences. Action, consequences. Action, consequences. Action, consequences. But if you have some action and no consequences, there's nothing to, de- to deter you, other words, from doing the same thing. Now you say, my God, that's 300 calories. That means three. Well, I can do without that cake. See, we want, we, want, we want the action, but we don't want the consequences. Are y'all listening to me? And see, some of you, you want the action of having somebody in your life. But the thing of it is, is this. You ain't looked at the heartbreak. It's the only thing you're dealing with right now. It happened now. But what down the road? what's going to happen six months down the road? What's going to happen if that Negro get tired of you? Come on now, let's, let's be real good. Or why does she get tired of you? When you done spent your money and you, every time she holler, other words, you doing this right here. Then see, after about six months, she tired of you because she done found somebody else. And now you, then see, you ready to kill somebody. You, you ready to commit, commit murder because you've been, you been taking off the hip, handing this out over here and handing this out over here and handing this out over here. And now she done moved on. Now you feel deceived. Now you feel played with. Now you feel other words have been made a fool out of. And that's the graveyards are full of people like that. You can't play with people. You better let your intention be known. See, some of y'all young girls, you better let your intention be known. What, what is your intentions? What, what, what is, do you, do you want my body and do you think I'm sexy? What is your intention? Come on, we, we're adults here. What do you want? Do you want some sex? Well, what is it that you want? What are your intentions are? Are y'all listening to me? Because I'm not staying in something. I'm not playing with this thing. This is my life you're talking about right now. 
I'm wasting time with you if you have no intention. Other words are going on, making something on a more permanent basis. I am sowing, and listen, I have nothing to look forward to reaping. You wouldn't sow nowhere that you wouldn't pretty much guarantee you can reap from. Oh, y'all listen to me. And sometimes you don't want to ask them because you're afraid of what they're about to say. But listen, it ain't what they're going to say. It's what's really the reality anyway. Oh, y'all listen to me. It's tough. I mean, we, we can play these games all we want to, but time, precious time. When you get my age next month, be 51 years old, I ain't got time to play no game. I ain't got no time to be sugarcoating stuff. I ain't got no time to be wondering about what you're feeling. No, this is my life we're talking about. And half of my life is all, most of half of my life is already gone. I ain't got time to try to impress you. If you don't mean me no good, hey, you know what? Hey, hey, later. Oh, y'all listen to me. Don't play a game and act like you, you, this is what you want and all the time. In other words, it's just comfortable for you. I'm not, it ain't here to make you comfortable. Are oh, y'all listening to me? Don't play with my emotions. Are oh, you listening? Be, be up front with me. Be straight with me. I can handle straight. Now, just talk to me straight. Don't lie to me. Just talk to me straight. And then when they talk to you, then you get upset. You know what I mean? What do you want? When they tell you, well, I don't really feel like this. Why you don't feel like this? That's crazy. Why you don't feel like that? You told the person to be straight with you, and now they're straight with you, and now you penalize them for being straight. You need some time to evaluate. What's your next move going to be? I got too much in, in involved and wrapped up in this thing. I got too much of this thing wrapped up in God all to find how at the end of my life this has been a host, that there ain't no heaven, that there's no reward system, and I've been trying to live right and do all the other kind of stuff. I mean, don't play with me. Don't have me walking straight in the narrow and having to do this and have to suck up and have to, in other words, apologize and have to repent all this to find out this is a whole stone. Don't play with me like this. I got too much time invested in this thing. Be straight up with me. I mean, if it ain't, it ain't. I can deal with it. At least it gives me some options. Don't fool me. All right? If I tell you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, is this okay? All right, verse 24. That's the reason why I sent the kids out. I sent the kids out because I knew it was going to be rough. <laughs> but it's true. It's true anyway. I emailed Pastor, emailed Pastor you know, uh, Jesse, you know, I mean, I sent you some money. One time you called me your daddy. I ain't your daddy. I need to find out what your motives are. If you think this is going to be a, a money cow, a cash cow, in other words, I don't want you calling me daddy because if you think you're trying to get something from me, we don't even have a relationship. You, you're only my son if you do what I tell you to do and we have a relationship and the Holy Ghost connects us. I mean, we, we, we're rushing too fast now. I don't just call people my sons or call people my daughter too quickly because I understand there's a lot more involved in that than this. You might look and say, well, okay, you know, he loaded or, or going to be loaded or whatever, and you're absolutely right. But listen, don't just think otherwise you can just walk right in there, and I'm just going to adopt. I got to know what kind of spirit you are. I got to see whether or not you can handle rebuke. I got to see whether or not when I chastise you, are you going to drop your head and then walk out like you don't have nothing to do with me because that comes with the territory. Are y'all listening to me? It is my sons that is obedient against my inheritance. Calvin and PJ don't automatically get my inheritance if they don't listen to what I got to say. They, they, they can let Andre beat them out. They can let some other people beat them out if they want to. You don't get it just because you're in the family. You get it because you're obedient. You get it because your heart is connected with mine. And when my heart beat, your beat too. And what concerns me concerns you. And you're there to aid and assist me. I'm not going to give you something just because you are my son. I'll give you some things. But the other things, the great things, the big things, you don't get just because you're my biological children. You get that because you're obedient. But you're also going to get truth. You're also going to get rebuke like nobody else. Are you listening to me? And if you can't handle the rebuke, you can't handle the blessing. Don't come looking for blessing if you can't handle the rebuke. Because rebuke is what, 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 what actually usher in the blessing. Because rebuke is what's going to cause you to grow. So you can handle the blessing and don't get stiff neck and starchy or think that you're somebody. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. How long have I been, Andre? I'm going to wind it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. 
Know you not that they which run in a race run all? But one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. See, see, this verse saying right here, don't just be running for the sake of running. There ought to be a reward or a prize after, after all this training that you're going through, after all this stuff you're going through. There ought to be compensation for you doing what God requires you to do. He says a runner, when he's running, he's not running to come in second. Are y'all listening to me? A true runner is running to win. You shouldn't do anything to say, well, third would be all right. You know what? At least you know what? I didn't get the I didn't get the number one ribbon, but you know I got something. No one trains to come in second. Everybody trained to come in first. Even though they know there may gonna be one person, you train with the intentions of winning. I don't wanna be just a Christian and and, and, and not be successful. It was kind of funny the other day, uh, someone called from the school, and I know the teacher a little bit. I don't really know him that well, but he called the house and got my cell phone number. Trisha gave him my cell phone number, and he, he called, and he said, uh, Mr. Taylor, he said, you know, for Black History Month, uh, we're having some kind of like, uh, I guess, uh, some kind of games where we want students to try to name certain people that are successful, and, and, and we wanted you to be in it. So he asked me a few questions and, and whatever. You know, success has all different kind of definition. And he was told me, asked me some questions, tell me about yourself and in other words, about different committees that you've been on and different things like this and uh, your children and all that. What year you graduated? Did your children graduate from the same likes to high school, whatever? And so they would put kind of like three or four different things up there and have the kids kind of, in other words, guess at who this person is. You understand what I'm saying? Now, they called me. I didn't call them. So somebody must have submitted something and in their mind to some element or some degree, I'm successful. But I didn't need him calling me to ask me that for me to know that I'm successful because success is measured differently by different people. Are you listening? And you can't get successful without effort. You can't get successful if you're simply just doing what everybody else is doing. There has to be something that separates you. There has to be something. Success is for me. It's different than success for somebody else. Somebody else might say success is having a million dollars in the bank. Well, a lot of people that have a million dollars, they ain't really successful. Success most of the time meaning that you have, you have helped somebody else and you have been a contributing factor for a better good to, to others. Are y'all with me? And so I gave him a few things, and then I, I kind of chuckled a little bit. But the thing of it is, <laughs> the thing of it is, is, I keep saying, well, you ain't dealing with no local joker. You're not dealing with no local joker. But what I'm talking about is self-control. If I let myself get out of control, what took most of my life to build can be gone in a moment. Can be gone in a moment. So sometimes that helps you keep straight. David would always be remembered, no matter how much he'd been king, Bathsheba would always be the thing to stand out in his mind. Bill Clinton, no matter what he do the rest of his life, he will be forever attached with Monica Lewinsky. What's her name, Lewinsky? So the thing of it is, is you can do a hundred things right, but if you do one thing, the, the really one thing, the taboo thing, you, under, you understand what I'm talking about is this, but see, you got to always be in control or you listen all the time because it's so easily to get out of control. And I'm not saying I'm in, in total control now, but what I'm saying is this, I'm not kidding myself. I'm not fooling myself. There are some people that lie to themselves. And as long as you lie to yourself, you'll never walk in the truth. But that scripture right here says, he that run the race, verse 24, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize, so run that you may attain. He says, run with the intention of winning. Verse 25, and every man that strives for the mastery is taught in how many things? Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we, what? An incorruptible. So he says, if you're going to master something, if, if you're going to be in control of something, if, if you're going to be, I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. If you're a musician, you're not going to become a great musician without being 
tempered without having strict training. That was one of the definitions for temperate is strict training. An Olympic runner or Olympic marathon runner or Olympic uh, how do you pronounce that? Right, okay, that, okay. Words get a little twisted. But the point of that is this. You don't do that by doing it an hour a day. If you're going to become a boxing champion, you can't do that an hour a day. You're going to have to give yourself four or five hours sometime to training. Not only to training, you got to eat right. Not only that, 30 days to 60 days before a fight, you can't have sex because it robs you of your strength. Now, are you willing to do what's necessary to win whatever it is that you're trying to win? That means you have to become disciplined in some areas that you can't do what everybody else is doing. You can't eat the cookies and the cake and the ice cream. In other words, and you can't watch TV five hours a day, in other words, and not train and expect to win. You listen, no one, you talking about you losing weight, but every time I see you, you at peace of heart. You ain't losing no weight. They ain't selling stuff in there, other words, that gonna make you healthy. I go to your house, and every time I go to your house, you got pieces, piece of boxes stacked that high, and ain't an apple or an orange to be found nowhere. You ain't losing no weight. You kidding yourself. You got nothing but junk food all around you. Other words, ice cream, your refrigerator full of ice cream. You ain't got nothing healthy in your refrigerator. You are not serious. You are kidding yourself. Your equipment got dust all on it. It's kind of like your Bible. The dust testify that you ain't doing nothing. You don't ever read no books. You don't ever pray. You ain't running no race. You on the sideline, man. You in the stands. You don't even qualify. Are y'all listening to me? And nobody, it ain't going to make sense to no one but you because they don't know what you got in sight. You can't tell me that you're working on something and you always at these fast food places spending five and six dollars a whop. No, no, you ain't working on nothing. You don't have no financial plan. Are y'all listening? You don't have no financial plan. I mean, you'll walk right past a penny and won't pick it up because you, I mean, cause you are so out of shape, you can't bend over no way. You see, if what you don't value, other words, will elude you. A pen is important. A dime is important. A nickel's is important. If you pick up enough of them and put it in a jar, other words, I'm telling you, it would accumulate. If you'll start reading, you'll start getting some knowledge. If you start studying, you'll start getting some understanding. Quit making excuses for, for not having anything. Quit making excuses for being out of shape. Quit making excuses for being friendless. You ain't planting the right seed. So if you ain't planting the right seed, you ain't going to get a harvest. You kidding yourself. Just quoting scripture ain't going to just make it happen by itself. Now, that scripture right here says this, and I'm stopping right here. He says the person that's going to master something has to be tempered in all things. probably the last month or so, month and a half or so, through some of the fellows that's in this church, when we started painting the wreck building over there, and, and uh, Lewis, and especially Andre, and Lewis and Jonathan and them have, have come over at different times and just, just painted. Andre's been there basically every Saturday, so he's put more time, he's over there, he's put more time in than anybody. Then yesterday out here, running the wires to the, where the sign's going to be. Other words, Chris and, and, and Andre was out there yesterday doing that. Other guys were working. Most all the other guys were working yesterday. But they are, are investing in things. They're putting things in there. And probably between the wreck building out there, we probably have, probably have saved the church $1,500 just by them doing the work. If we call somebody in to get them to paint the, the wreck building, then they've probably been talking about $1,300, $1,400 just to paint it. Get somebody to run this wire from out there. They want three or four hundred dollars to run to run that to dig that out there. But then you got some people in our church. We got some men in our church that I say, "Come on, you know, we we can save the church some money." You know, a lot of things I do around here, you save save the church money. Sometimes, yes, it would be convenient just to call somebody in and do it if you had that kind of money to do that. Hey, but we working on something. 
We got other projects that we're, that we're looking at doing. Tony has come also and helped them paint over there. You know, since he started working, he, he ain't available as much as he used to be. But then when he wasn't really working, he would come over there and help me do different things like that. You, you, you're working on something. You, just, you ain't just, just picking up the phone, calling somebody to do something for you. We're thinking about striking that thing out there ourselves. See, because you've got to be innovative. You, you've got to be creative. You take the gifts that God's given you. There are gifts that have not been discovered yet, and you'll never discover them until you put your hands to something. And can save yourself a lot of money. Now, people would love to come and do it. We had that box over here wired. Guy came Friday evening, three and a half to four hours. It's finished. That's three hundred dollars. Another bid, a guy the guy wanted four fifty for it. This guy here is Christian. Me and him got to talking. I knew him before. Well, he's a Christian. I mean, he got it, and he told me what his price was. That's $150 cheaper than the other one. One, one wanted four fifty. The one that wanted four fifty when he came in, I smelled alcohol on his breath. You know, I, I, he was black. I knew I probably wasn't going to go that way because, you understand what I'm saying? But this guy, he's a white guy that did this $300. That's $150 cheaper than the other guy quoted. See, you got to always be looking. And it doesn't matter whether or not we got the money in it to pay for it or not. You got to be looking at certain ways and say, okay, if I can do this, then I stretch and we can go farther this way. If I can do this here, I can go stretch farther this way. Now, but if we want to be down the church, we go get somebody that my God, you know, we'll do it. We, I mean, $600, $700, and then just write them a check. Yeah, but then you got less to work with too. I'm not talking about going cheap because sometimes cheap is more expensive. But then I'm also saying that you cannot necessarily go straight to the top right off the bat. You make your confession about that. We don't have the most expensive sign, but we ain't got the cheapest one either. We got the one that's compatible to where we are right now. That's not going to put a loose around our neck and, and strain us where we can't pay for it. There are some people, in other words, just because you're a king's kid, you have the king's kid, but you don't have the king's paycheck book right now. You don't get his paycheck book till you get his heart. He doesn't give you a blank check until you have proven yourself, other words, that you know how to do business. That's the reason why God is watching you right now, to see how you're handling your business and seeing whether or not you're thinking kingdom first or you think thinking self first. Everything I do, I'm saying this financially, everything I do now, I think in mind of, okay, what is this going to do to my kingdom? What is this going to do to my pledge? What is this going to do? Because you know what? Hey, that's first. That's first. What am I doing about my savings? Because the truth, the truth of the matter is, I got to invest in myself. That's what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about self-control. See, I don't need me teaching this to you. If, if listen, if I don't, I'm not in control of myself. I save some. I spend some. And you know I sow. Well, I tell you, this church saves something every week because we got some things that we're looking out for. And then we don't be hollering around writing letters and asking people, won't you help me? Well, won't you help me? Won't you help me? You got to be understand how this thing works. Self-control. Can you keep your mouth? Do you always fly off the handle every time somebody make you mad? Do you go into a rage every time you don't get your way? Those are the signs of immature babies. Can you take no and not get bitter about it. Can somebody have the liberty in your life that you don't need that right now? And you say, okay, yes, sir. Instead of trying to just, well, I can do this, I can do this. Why don't you save some money then? You can do this. Why don't you walk this week? Excuses, 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 excuses. Why are you still paying on something for 10 years that should have been paid for in two? Excuses. Because you ain't disciplined. You don't have a plan. You never look at your plan. You never implement your plan. And as a result of that, you're still confessing the right things, but ain't nothing happened. You're confessing the right thing, but ain't nothing happened. Two years you've been confessing the same thing, ain't nothing happened. Three years you've been confessing the same thing, ain't nothing happened. There must be something more than just confessing. Because of confessing alone would get it, you had it by now. Are you listening? By his stripes I'm healed. There's more to it than that. By his stripes I'm healed. There's more to it than that. By his stripes I'm healed. There's more to it than that. How you eating? How you resting? Do you have unforgiveness in your heart? 
How y'all listening to me? I'm lonely. Well, you ain't very friendly. You never smile. You never say anything to anybody. You're stuck up. Don't nobody want to talk to you. You're not, you don't have an inviting face. You have a frightening face. I didn't say inviting. I say frightening. I'm not saying that try to be funny. See, 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 you set off an aura. You set off something that draws people or repel people. See, and when you're not disciplined, you can say what you want to say. When you're not disciplined, other people picks it up as well. Did you see how she just stoned out of there? Did you see how he just, what's their problem? That person didn't say nothing, you know, that, that damaging. They just, come on, lighten up. You're out of control. And you know you don't like for somebody to get on your particular subject. But then you get all humped all over and down like that. Well, that means you don't want to change. You need to get in the mirror and have a talk to yourself, and you need to tell yourself, self, why are we going? Why do we continue to lie to each other? We say stuff and we don't do it. We make declarations and we don't. We don't. We don't keep up with it. We're out of control. Let me say this to you too, and quit going so far off the chart that you won't ever reach it. Some of you are just talking about, I want to lose a hundred pounds this year. Oh, stop it. Just, just, just stop it. I don't want to hear that. You ain't lost a hundred pounds in ten years. So what makes you think? What makes you think you're gonna lose a hundred this year when you ain't you ain't lost twenty in ten years? Why don't you get a goal that is reachable and that makes sense? Why don't you say something like, "I would like to lose two pounds a month." And at the end of the year, I've lost 24 pounds. Well, that is a great step in the right direction towards your 100. Instead of putting that 100 way out there, and you already know if you lose it, you got to get sick to lose it. You go in the hospital now, yeah, you lose it. You lose your whole life. But the, but the thing of it is, it, it, it's not even realistic. But two pounds, two pounds in 30 days is realistic. You got that much water. You got that much water weight. You understand? And so we said these way goes over here and then we, we down here. I'm going to get to the place I can lift 500 pounds. Well, at least start with 20. Common sense stuff. But if I lost two pounds a month for 12 months, at the end of the year, I have lost 24 pounds and I did it healthy, health wise. I didn't starve myself. I didn't go on some crazy, stupid diet. I lost it the right kind of way. Now I'm changing a lifestyle changing a lifestyle instead of just putting this way out there. You talking about, well, I want to I want to say $200 a month. Well, you owe everybody. You can't. You might can save 20. So save the 20. Start right where you are. God gets involved with people right where they are. Okay, God doesn't look for you to just say, wait, listen, once you get the 20 mastered and you've been doing that for six or eight months, then you might can say, you know what, I'm going to stretch my faith. I'm going to bump it up five more. I'm thinking I can save 25 instead of 20. Now you're on your way. And notice I said last week, it ain't saving if you go back and get it Wednesday. If you put it in the money, go back and get it Wednesday, that's a checking account. That's not a saving account. Start right where you are and start to do that. Chris, let me ask you this. I don't know whether you, are you sore this morning? Back a little sore. Andre, you sore a little bit? He said everywhere. You know why they sore? Because they use muscles that they don't normally use. And they did it out there four, five, six hours yesterday, bending and shoveling and bending and shoveling and bending and shoveling. You know what those muscles telling you this morning? I'm still here. You just had never used them. And so, therefore, I let you know that I'm here. That's the reason why I, my back might be hurting a little bit or something. I'm letting you know that, listen, there ain't nothing wrong with the muscles. You just hadn't been exercising them. Ain't nothing wrong with your faith muscles. You just simply had not been exercising them. Ain't nothing wrong with self-control. You just have not been exercising it. You don't have to get hot every time somebody make you mad. You don't have to storm out of the house every time somebody make you mad. It's a choice. It's a decision. It's a choice and it's a decision that you make and you put everything in it to make that decision work for you. Even if you miss it, you get back on track. I'm not going to be controlled by other people and what other people think. And they don't have to agree with me, but I don't have to act a fool because they say something I don't like. 
And I don't have to get all upset and angry and flustered and be on the verge of cussing. Because you, you know you cussing, you out of control. And then you know what you want to blame them. They just make me cuss. They don't make you curse. You curse because you got cussing in you. Get it out of you, then you won't have nothing other word to come forth. Stay away from it. Don't let them other word pull your chain. Remove the chain and they got nothing to pull. Now we communicate. Notice it said self-control. You're the only self that ought to be controlling you. Don't ever let another person control you. You can control yourself because no one likes for somebody else to violate your will. You say, now they just going to make me do, they make you feel funny, don't they? make you feel funny when somebody is just going to, just, just, just don't consider you at all, just, just going, you know what I'm saying? Now there's a proper way of somebody that you trust that you got a relationship with is telling you something that's going to help you. But they still can't make you. No matter what I preach this morning, I can't make you have self-control. You can walk right out of here this morning, right after hearing this word and go do something stupid if you want to. And you know what? I still love you. I, I can't control you. I'm just simply telling you this is the area that's causing us to miss it in. But then don't come back and complain to me. Don't, I, I don't know. What, what did you do? Y'all hear the message, you know? Y'all hear the message. 